Thank you, Jeff, for sharing your views. And we'd like you to, we hope you will accept oh. this gift as a token of our appreciation sure. for Thank being here today. Thank, Thank you. you. And we will start, uh, well, actually, first we'll do a second round of question card pickups. So if you have a question ready for Jeff Atwater, would you please raise your index card in the air? And one of our volunteers will come get that from you. Wow. And now we'll start off our questions with our students from Lynn University. Would the first student please stand and ask your question of our speaker? I'm Natalie Hoya from Lynn University. I'm a student at Lynn University. And my question for you today is how does the newly passed health care provisions affect Florida? Uh, the question today is how does the newly passed health care uh, provisions uh, referring to the Washington yes. uh, plan that is presently in the courts? Okay. Um, the, um, the spirit behind the new plan was to try to be sure that every American had access to health care. Um, I, I might personally believe there was flaws in the, in the, in the design, but that was the, that was the design and the intent and the well-meaning of those who passed it. Um, it is presently in the court system. A federal judge in, in, that is based in Florida, in Pensacola, concluded that parts of it, significant part of it, was unconstitutional and therefore it is now in the courts. Um, if, it, if it were to pass, there's kind of a balancing act here. I know I've got to be quick on, on answers, right, Gail? I know I got, I got the clear direction. I won't run off the clock. Um, but frankly, right now, there are, there are many in the audience today that are in the healthcare industry. We're hardly giving them a fair reimbursement rate to see someone in the emergency room, to be able to keep the lights on, to be able to keep professionals working. So there's a real balancing act that we're trying to work. But at the moment, uh, and that's what the idea is behind this plan, get that kind of care. However, if this were to pass, we would probably see an increase of those in Florida coming into the plan from about three million to probably four and a half million. Now, the challenge is that is that we would then be funding that. How will we fund that in Florida without significant tax increases or out cutting other expenses, education, transportation, other health care needs? So at the moment, it's in the courts, and we'll see how it plays out. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And second question from our students. My name is uh, Christopher Van Wart. I'm also a Lynn University student. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how Florida's money is invested. Sure. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just got a hand. Uh, past President uh, Link said wisely. Um, the, um, it, is a, it is quite the portfolio. It's a very good question because we have just experienced a tremendous downturn in the stock market. Uh, we have uh, a, a way of both actively managing uh, retirement dollars and investment dollars and passively managing. Uh, every day I manage about $20 billion in your state treasury cash flow. That is all short term, very safe investment. Longer term, we as a cabinet sit as your um, uh, trustees over the pension. The state pension is about $125 billion. And, uh, and we have, a, we have a, a management process that looks at that as um, those that would be in passive investments, index funds, and then those that would be in equities, global equities, uh, uh, hedge funds. We have, we have a, a business plan for all of that. So it is a mix of an investment plan. It is well regarded. I would tell you this. It probably ranks as the, the fourth most envied pension plan in the country for how the legislature, again, give credit, funded it, how well it's in, and wisely has been invested for its returns and that the, that the dollars are there to begin to serve those who will retire. It's a very good question. We took, we took it on the chin in July and August, but far better than most. Thank you. Yeah. And now some questions from our audience members. Couple of questions on this topic. What was your reaction to President Obama's job speech, and will it be positive for Florida? Um, first, I, I want to go to a place on this question that uh, we have to, again, uh, get together. There is no good and evil in this conversation. As Americans, we have to find the pathway together. I think there were good things that the, that the uh, President laid out on trying to keep dollars in the, pack, in the pockets of consumers and entrepreneurs at this part in the economic cycle. And therefore, reductions to the corporate tax rate, I wish would be far grander and bolder and immediate. Uh, allowing um, reductions in payroll taxes is value, but it won't be quite enough. I don't suspect that you're going to see an attraction in the Congress to uh, additional spending that is coming in the, in the plan. So I just want to be frank and the honest uh, with that. 
I would hope that as they get together, though, uh, they will look at not only those that, that, the, that the president put forward, and again, we, we, we want to encourage positive conversations and not taking shots. He put something on the table. Now let everybody else come to the table. My hope is it'll be more in the area of economic activity, meaning more in the area of reducing taxes and getting money staying in the marketplace in consumers and businesses spending it in making their choice where to invest capital. I think that'll be far better for the grand plan for the next 20 years rather than to just get us to 2014. All right, we'll jump over to a state question here. If the governor and the CFO have large philosophical differences, how is that reconciled? <laughs> Got any feedback for me on that one? <laughs> um, the, um, uh, the, uh, yeah, well, I would tell you, um, we're among friends, right? Uh, I, um, I feel very good about the situation. Honestly, because what I see this state needs and what I believe this country needs is money staying in the pockets of hardworking people and everybody getting out of the cart and putting their shoulder to the wheel and doing something. And, and that is what is coming out of the governor's office today. It is tough. It is raw. It may be hard hitting, but it is very clear. And, um, and so I share the same enthusiastic uh, desire I believe that is shared out of the governor's office, whether it's communications, whether it's tempo. We all might have our, our concern. But frankly, um, Florida has a great opportunity uh, to be, again, a great economic engine for the, and I just gave you the numbers we are today. Um, there, are, there only are occasions. Um, Florida did establish a cabinet of four people. So I do, when I sit with the governor, I do not sit on his cabinet. I sit on your cabinet. Uh, uh, some people confuse that. So when, when, when the governor, the attorney general, the ag commissioner and I sit as your cabinet, we vote independently as we see things. So to the extent that there is uh, differences, uh, and there are some. Uh, I'll vote as I believe you've, uh, you've heard me out and expected me to vote. Thank you. Another state question, how fiscally sound is Florida's retirement system? If it is sound, what has kept it that way? And if it is not, what do we need to do to correct it? Good, and that's a follow-up. I believe it's Christopher's question from, uh, from the university. Uh, it, it is envied across the country. It is probably about 88% funded. Uh, and it would have been about 90, 91% funded had we not had the corrections that we had in August. Uh, it is solid because you have had a legislature. And again, I have to thank President Lewis and all those who came before uh, Representative Rooney uh, and Senator Benacquisto who are here today, um, all those uh, who have made decisions to fund it and not kick that can down the road. Other states did not fund it as they were supposed to do at the end of each year or in their budget. That's why they have the shortfall. The investment portfolio has worked well. There's been wise decisions that have been made, and the benefits have not been extraordinarily, uh, let me use the term, rich as compared to other states. They have been sound benefits. They have been invested as they should, uh, and they have been, uh, the investment uh, contribution was made on time. And I also want to add, uh, former Senator Aaron Burgess here today, deserves the same credit as those who I've just mentioned. Those were hard decisions. Make the contribution, believe me. It would have been nice to have used those contribution dollars to have balanced some other part of the budget, but we didn't see that as an option, and that's why it's the envy of the country. Now jumping back, it looks like we have quite a few members who are interested in some answers on federal issues. Does the USA need a CFO? No. The USA um, needs a Congress uh, that um, can see past the next election cycle. Um, the, the, the USA, um, the USA, um, really, I mean, this is, and I, and I know that I'm looking around so many friends and I, and I get the differences in some of the, uh, the generations that we represent. Again, I cannot imagine those of you who dedicated your life to creating this community or building the state or the glory of this country can at night rest knowing that your grandchildren are going to have to pay the bill. This is, this is an absolute embarrassment and disgrace. There is no way they will ever be able to have a paycheck to pursue the prosperity that you and I have enjoyed when the debt is going to come due on their watch. And uh, that's what the Congress needs. 
couple of questions based on your speech regarding taxes. Uh, one person asks, does this disparity in taxes not reflect the great disparity in income? And one other member asks, um, wants to know a little bit more about that 44% who do not pay taxes. Who are those people? Uh, I have their names. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> You know, um, here's what I'll, here's, let me try to sum it up this way. Um, uh, um, let, me, let me try to put it in these terms that could best describe this. I don't know when we became a country that would choose to disincent hard work. Try to imagine two electricians. One chooses to work 30 hours a week. The other is making another decision. The future of their family, the education of their children, their retirement years the burdens they carry, unknown to you and I. That individual chooses to work 70 hours a week. Why would that individual be in a higher tax bracket than the one working 30? You cannot defend that. When people get up in the morning and give it all they've got, we should cherish, honor, and celebrate that. So whoever we are and wherever we are on the scale, I do not want those who cannot afford to meet their own needs and are desperate to be paying the federal income tax. There is plenty of room for that. But 44%? You tell me how long, and that is growing every single year. You tell me how long the few at one end can carry all the needs of the whole. It is not mathematically possible. All right, jumping to a different topic. How do you feel about Senator Negron's bill to add the Education Commission to the cabinet? Um, is, is the Senator, Senator Negron is one good man. Uh, <laughs> and, um, but let me say this. Um, I think uh, uh, there, w when we come together for an election, we, we have one individual run to be the chief executive of the state, and that individual is the governor. And that individual is responsibility for the thought process of how we will be allocating the precious resource that comes from all the sources, whether it's our sales tax, our corporate income tax, whatever it may be, all of our energy and effort that throws off resources to the government to serve you. And it, and it is my opinion that when someone decides to get in that arena and run that race, they should be able to articulate how the deployment of those resources will meet the needs of the potential needs, inspire children, recognized and extraordinary gifted people who are educators in that, in that public debate. And if we set off and elect an education commissioner differently than the governor, who is going to fund the one's ideas you know, when the other one holds control? You're, you're really setting up a challenging situation. It would seem to me that we would take the solemn, the solemn uh, importance of casting a vote to put a chief executive officer in place that is looking to uh, create an education system sound and whole, to fund it appropriately, and to carry that bait uh, throughout an election. I don't think that uh, it's a misguided concept. I just think that at the, at the moment, I haven't heard the case that Senator Negron is going to make for it. If you could sit down with Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke, what would you tell him? <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, I'd encourage him to hold all future uh, open market committee meetings in Florida where we would benefit from the, uh, the economic activity. But um, uh, the, um, the portfolio of ideas is empty. Uh, there is nothing else. There's not another hand to play. If you could have imagined 10-year treasuries below 2%, and committing that treasuries and, and rates will stay low for the next two years, and no one jumps up to run out and get a mortgage at the lowest rates ever, there is just only so many cards he can play, and he has played them. It now is about fiscal policy, and I know it's no greater comfort to you to know that fiscal policy is in the hands of Congress. Uh, but I, uh, I do not believe that he has a, a hand left to play, and uh, he played it. And I think he did it with all good intentions, but this is where we are. The inability to see the future of someone who is holding capital today is what is holding us down. 
and that is regulation and taxation and spending that they cannot imagine is going to be able to make their next investment a return that is going to be better than buying a 2% treasury. That's where we're at. This person is reflecting on the 10-year anniversary of 9-11 and wants to know how can our government return to finding a way to govern from the middle? Um, I think that's a really important question. And that is uh, one that we should, ha we should have high expectations um, now as American citizens to hold uh, our elected officials to performing um, to that level. The, uh, this, again, this uh, conversation and debate that we're having is nobody is willing to get off center, and I, I may have stated it subtly with either holding to the faith of their own political um, point or looking down the road at how to best create an environment for success for the next generation. Uh, the only thing um, and the great thing that our Constitution provide, provides us is that the founders created by extraordinarily um, gifted design a system where every two years one group of that body with a sense of urgency comes back to us for our vote. The other given a longer period of six years to contemplate the consequences of each decision they make. We just have to exercise clearly, vocally, uh, enthusiastically the generous, unique gift of being in a democracy, being in this republic, to exercise that vote and hold them accountable. In the absence, I, I don't know how we continue to observe what's taking place with, with any affection, that all parties continue to talk past each other, believing that they're the only ones who have the answer, and they're willing to drive the other one under the bus for the sake of the next election. The children of this country, the, the future of this country, depend on our active involvement and our loud voice. Yeah. How independent is Florida's banking system when so many banks in Florida come from out of state and why are no Florida banks national? Um, the, uh, this is a really um, important uh, point for us. The, um, uh, and if I, I know I'm, I'm risking this, Gail, by taking it a little bit larger than the question. Okay, I'm going to just be fast about it. Um, we passed TARP, uh, the very definition of TARP, the Toxic Asset Relief Program, so that we could somehow get the banking industry moving again. I mentioned 23 percentage of the homes are right now in Florida are in foreclosure or delinquent. And, and you don't have to give me a show of hands, but if you put your head down and I ask for a show of hands, I can assure you no hands will go up. I'd ask how many of you got a call from the bank and said, you know that federal bailout money? We want to relieve you of the toxic assets that's on our books. You've had some bad luck. The values drop. You know, you're on rough times. No, no. But at the very same time, the same regulators have run into the banks and they're standing on their chest and they're making them mark everything to market, which simply means that even though a shopping center loan has been paying perfectly, even though it's part vacant, the owner is sacrificing and making it work, the regulators say, mark it down to what the value is today. Well, on their balance sheet, when they do that, they take capital that they could be lending to you and I, and they swing it over here to cover the loss. They have no capacity to lend us money. So um, we've lost over 50 banks in Florida, 50 community banks have failed in Florida in the last 24 months. We'll probably lose another four or five by the end of this year. Um, we're on at least a better trend line. We're not losing them as fast as we lost them. This is serious. Those people were not too big to fail. It was the risk taker and the investor that lost everything under this regulatory scheme. It has been too harsh, it has been too egregious, and unless we get off these banks, we're not going to have any uh, economic activity of the new risk taker of our time. Now, um, having said that, there is very little Florida regulatory environment can do. Um, we do have a federal uh, scheme that they insert themselves very aggressively. Uh, and the question would, would be, uh, might we see a time when we have more state chartered banks uh, begin to come to the fore that have at least a little bit different relationship with state regulator versus federal regulator. Um, but uh, this is, we are still in for a very 
very difficult path uh, for the next 24 months. If you're in the audience wondering, could I get an inventory loan this Christmas for the business or holiday season, or what are the prospects of me doing a build-to-suit building, that's better than, uh, frankly, just another commercial real estate exercise that you're not going to be uh, in yourself. It's going to be very hard to get access to credit in the banking industry. Yes. A few questions on this. Word on the street has it that your future plans include a run for governor or possibly U.S. Senate. Please comment. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Enid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dr. E.C. <laughs> um, uh, they include, they, uh, thanks very much, they, 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 they include neither. Um, I believe in term limits. I, I am looking around the room in extraordinarily gifted public servants, whether they be at the city, a special taxing district, a school board, county commission, or a city commissioner. Uh, I served uh, the eight years in the legislature that the Constitution provided. I was fully uh, prepared to come home and join you at these tables again every month. And the opportunity came that chief financial officer, I thought, was a position constitutionally that I might have skill sets that I could serve you well. Um, I hope that I have the opportunity to serve uh, seven more years in this capacity, uh, and then I think it would be really nice uh, to be home with you uh, every week. So uh, there are no other plans, and it will really be good to be back soon, or seven years from now. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's your call more than mine. <laughs> Last question. Will Florida State beat Oklahoma on Saturday? <laughs> you know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Gator twice over. Uh, but I got to tell you, I think the Seminoles are for real. And if I were Oklahoma, I wouldn't get down here. I think, I think Florida State's going to take it to them. Thank you all very much.